uh, would you mind talking a little bit about how you got to this part of the process? Like, uh, how, how did you end up with a gallery? Were, was this, have you done this forever? No. <laughs> <laughs> I've had a few careers in my life. Um, I should say I owned this property before I started doing this, so there's a lot of serendipity involved here. Okay. Uh, I went and volunteered in South Africa for two years in 1999 and 98 and 99, mm -hmm. and going backwards there. And um, the first project I was working on, because I used to be a, a journalist, uh, was at the University of KwaZulu Natal in Durban. They sent me to Zimbabwe on assignment to represent them at the Zimbabwe uh, International Book Fair which used to be, I'm talking back in 98, the biggest literary event in Africa, bar none. You have publishers from all over the world, including Canada. And uh, it was a five-day event that took place in the sculpture gardens attached to the National Gallery. So I spent a week being immersed in a particular work from the first generation, mm -hmm. uh, including uh, Walter's father, Yoram, and really falling in love with the work. Um, I added on a few days to travel around Zimbabwe to select some sculpture for myself, uh, which I did, took back to the capital, handed over to a shipper, uh, and said, um, okay, I'm, I'm not back in Canada for two years, so no rush, here's the money, here's the money for the shipping, and off I went back to South Africa. I, I returned here two years later, no sculptures. Oh, no. So I always say that was my first lesson in international shipping. You don't hand over the goods, the money, and say I'm not in a rush. It's kind of a fatal trio. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. So, but I, I guess the, the good thing about that is I was very distressed not to have my sculptures. So when someone I'd worked with in South Africa um, was in touch with me, he was curating a show in Washington, D.C. of this work. It was part of, part of a Southern Africa kind of youth day uh, uh, or youth month or whatever, celebration of art. And then it was supposed to travel with a gallery around the States, but when they saw what was involved, they kind of changed their minds at the last minute. Okay. Um, you know, you're dealing with weight issues, you're dealing with, you know, how do you display them? I mean, having a sculpture gallery is very different from hanging paintings on the wall, <laughs> uh, as yes, I have learned. Yes, <laughs> especially a stone sculpture <laughs> gallery. <laughs> <laughs> So I basically said, well, why not ship them up here and I'll see what I can do. Uh, now the work you see in Zimbabwe is always outside, that's where the artists work. Uh, they have three national galleries, all three national galleries have outdoor uh, sculpture exhibition um, spaces. And when the work first travelled to the UK and Europe, um, in the 60s and 70s, it was always shown in outdoor spaces, in botanical gardens, stately homes in the UK, that kind of thing. So I just thought, well, you know, it'd be hard for me to have an exhibition in my house anyway, mm -hmm. so why not follow with tradition and have this uh, exhibition outside? So I cleared a little bit of the space that you're looking at here, because this actually was pretty much bush before I started uh, showing the work. Uh, and had an exhibition with 42 pieces, um, and the response was phenomenal. People were so moved by the work, uh, intrigued, had so many questions, which quite honestly at that stage I couldn't answer, and I felt the best person to answer it would indeed be an artist from Zimbabwe. So when I decided it was worth giving this another try, and going to Zimbabwe and selecting more work, I also decided that was the time to make sure that there was always an artist here um, during the exhibition. And uh, that's kind of how it all began. Wow. Mm. Wow. Not I've fun. often heard that a creative life isn't planned, that it's one step, then whatever the next step opens itself to being, and so on. That's what this sounds like. Is Very that what it felt so. like? Did it feel Very like it at the so. time? I mean, when you look back in hindsight now, it looks like, oh, she did this, 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 this. But but it really was serendipity, wasn't it? It was. And I mean, I, I was also very open to it. When I yes. went to South Africa, I had said, I'm expecting that somehow this experience is going to change my life. I don't know how. I don't know what I'll do when I come back to Canada. Um, but I'm open to it really changing my life. Uh, and I always joke that part of the reason I went was because... Uh, uh, I wanted my 
uh, hair to go, I was colouring my hair at the time, mm -hmm. I wanted it to, to go uh, grey without looking like poor white trash. And no, one, <laughs> no one would know if I, were, uh, if I were in Zimbabwe. And the other thing is I had too many points on my driver's licence and this was a way of getting myself back to zero and learning to keep my foot off the gas pedal. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever the reason. <laughs> so, um, but I, I was expecting it to change. I just never yes. expected it to to take this direction. I wow. never predicted it. Transform. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Fran, thank you so much for for agreeing to do this, for telling us about your absolutely outstanding gallery. It's just such an amazing space. Well, thank you. And I love sharing it, as you know. So this is just a pleasure. I